What's happening gamers, it's K-Wing here with another Retro Monday! Today's classic game is Ghouls and Ghosts for the Mega Drive and Sega Genesis, released by Capcom in 1989 and 1990. Now this series is known as one of the hardest and most frustrating games in the hack and slash horror genre to this day. Not only do players have to worry about lots of ghouls and monsters coming your way, but your character can only take two hits before meeting his untimely end. Ooh. The story follows the same Rescue the Princess routine, only making one exception to the rule. See, this time, Princess Prin Prin gets killed in the opening, well, at least in the arcade game, having her soul ripped away along with many others by the devil. In case you didn't know, this game is a direct sequel to Ghosts and Goblins, which released in 1985 in the arcades and 1986 on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, our hero has actually upped his arsenal a lot since the last three years, like being able to attack in two more directions from above and below, which is a great new improvement from the last game, believe me. Arthur also gains a golden suit, which allows him to use super attacks on the numerous undead he encounters. Like before, the gallant knight must face off against monstrous bosses at the end of the stage and collect different weapons from chests along the way. Two new weapons have been added to his arsenal for the sequel. The super sword, which is a great new addition in my opinion and is very powerful, and the discus, which I never really used. There are a total of seven weapons in this game and six weapons will let Arthur use a super attack, but not all of them are useful. Just like with the original game, players have to go through the gauntlet of ghouls twice in order to beat the game. Curse you, Capcom! After facing the boss at the end of Stage 5, outside of the gates of hell, the king's ghost appears and tells Arthur that he can't face the devil just yet. Then Prin Prin appears and says that the good goddess has deemed him worthy and is hiding in a chest somewhere in the game. So they send you back to the very beginning of the game to acquire this new power. So, what didn't I like about this game? Well, besides the feeling like I was going to have a stroke playing this game and nearly bashing one of my Genesis controllers to death, not that much. Everyone complains about the difficulty in all the reviews I've read and seen for Ghosts and Goblins and Super Ghosts and Ghouls. My response is yes, of course this game is going to be hard, but unlike the original, it is possible to master. That being said, I do have some minor issues with this game. The two hits and your dead thing made sense in the first game. But since Arthur gets the magic armor now, why don't we get a three strike policy in total instead of two? I mean, it would make more sense since he has the golden suit, he could take another hit. But no. The bosses that I could not stand in this game was boss number four and five. Both are extremely challenging and very cheap but the flying bee thing is what gave me the most headaches in this game. However, my biggest gripe with this game is the blasted final weapon that you get. It's wicked powerful and all, but like the shield, its range is limited as well. Out of all the weapons you get, for some reason, this one has no super move at all. What, are you kidding me? That and if you lose the power up, you have to find it again before facing the end boss, or you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game. Alrighty, now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's time to move on to the stuff that I actually did like about this game. After all these years, I still can't get over how great the gameplay is. When I first played this game as a child, I was thrilled that I could now attack enemies from above. Not being able to do that in Ghosts and Goblins made killing the flying enemies harder than it needed to be. Ghouls and Ghosts, on the other hand, made it easier and fun to slay the monsters in the air. Graphics for this game look great and it's very similar to its arcade counterpart, which is very cool. The music on the other hand is very well done, but personally I liked how it sounded in the arcade and the Amiga versions better than the Genesis one. Using super moves in this game was total awesome sauce gamers, but what made it even better was the fact I could use the attacks as much as I wanted to as long as the knight was still wearing the golden suit. Out of all the weapons in this game, the super sword is definitely my favorite. It may be the shortest weapon in the game, but what it lacks in range, it made up with in sheer power. Not to mention, its lightning super attack came in handy a lot, and I relied on it heavily throughout this game. Like many 16-bit games of its day, it too featured cheat codes to input at the title screen, like making your knight invincible or doing a level select which made playing the game even more fun. To wrap up, Ghouls made a lot of improvements and was an excellent sequel and paved the way for the best game in the series in my opinion, 
Super Ghouls and Ghosts. But I'm gonna need to brush up on my skills before I review that game next October. This is a game that I definitely recommend you guys playing, whether you buy the original off the Genesis, or you want to get it off the Wii's Virtual Console for just 800 Wii points. You can't go wrong with this game. Alrighty, that does it for another Retro Monday! Keep checking back every Monday to see another classic game review in the old school K-Wing style. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with my Retro Mondays, Gaming with K-Wing, Playback Thursdays, and of course my next gen reviews I do for my freelance gigs every two weeks on Fridays. That does it for me gamers, God bless and happy gaming, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe, and until we meet again gamers.